A couple other things that I'd like to mention about performance. Since this is a performance website, we want to talk a little bit about that. A lot of people want to know, okay, well, I've got my chip, I've got my truck chipped, I've got um, pipe, I've got uh, propane injection, methanol, water injection, all of those things. Can I still run biodiesel? And the answer is resoundingly yes. If the fastest diesel engine in the world could put B20 in it and go set land speed records, and I'm sure they had non-stock parts on that truck, chipped and all sorts of things, uh, you definitely can run biodiesel with all those modifications. In fact, I would suggest that in some cases it's going to help, because if you've chipped your truck, you're now pushing your turbo a little bit harder, uh, you can increase your EGTs, which is your temperatures headed out the back, um, exhaust gas temperatures, Biodiesel is going to lower that, so it's going to actually complement any of the performance things you have on your truck. So that's that's important to note. If you uh, would like to do some research on it, go to Diesel Power Magazine, um, dieselpowermag.com, I think, or something. Look it up on Google, and they talk about that. They actually did a really good article where they threw some trucks on dynos with biodiesel and non-biodiesel. They had chips in them. They did different things like that, just to show you that it really didn't impact anything. So that's a little bit on performance. I wanted to talk a little bit about performance issues in biodiesel and biodiesel and how it affects vehicles, if you will. Um, just a, a few, a little trivia, if you will. Biodiesel allows you to push your engine harder because it burns slower. It has a higher flash point and therefore it actually has a much higher cetane value as well. And, and the people that produce and sell biodiesel commercially like to really trump about that because it's it's a nice thing to brag about. However, biodiesel per gallon actually has about a 10 to 12 percent decrease in BTU. BTU is a thermal unit of energy in a gallon of biodiesel. So if I had this, and this is biodiesel made from canola oil, and I had the equivalent of petroleum diesel sitting right next to it, there's going to be more energy in the petroleum diesel than there is in the biodiesel. However, the biodiesel is going to burn a little bit better. It's going to give less smoke. You're going to get, it's, it's going to burn slower, if you will. So there's a lot of performance issues. A lot of people want to know, okay, how's this going to affect my car when I start using it in it? First of all, it's going to quiet the engine down. Second, it's going to possibly gum up the fuel filters. And we've got a fuel filter we're going to show you that's gummed up so you see what's going on. It basically acts as like super turbo powered injector cleaner and it will clean your whole fuel system out. It has some solvent properties to it. In fact, if your vehicle is older than a 1993, then you may want to check with your manufacturer to see if they will allow you to put this in the fuel lines, because if they're made out of Buna or EPDM rubber, it can erode that rubber over time. I've actually got a thing here that I, it just completely blew it away. It won't do it all at once, so if you use it immediately, you're not going to lose your fuel line out in the middle of the freeway somewhere. It's just going to start to weep, and it'll start to eventually deteriorate. As um, anecdotal evidence, though, I've got an old 1984 Isuzu pickup diesel. Old thing. Uh, I've put lots and lots of biodiesel through it. I've yet to have a leak. And so some of the manufacturers used a little bit different, different things on them. I do know that Volkswagens are prone to it. Uh, Mercedes are prone to it as well. Uh, Dodge, Cummins, uh, Dodge Cummins, Chevy Power Stroke, or Chevy Duramax and Ford Power Stroke, I haven't heard near as much. I, I think the Ford, the International engines, uh, some of those fuel lines you'll need to, to do some things with. Um, fuel mileage, let's talk about that. It will go down. It'll go down depending on the vehicle you use, um, <clears throat> as little as a couple miles per gallon. My truck usually gets 30 miles to the gallon. I get 29 on biodiesel, so it's it's kind of insignificant. I've heard of the old Chevy uh, 6.2, 6.9 dropping by quite a bit, and that has to do with a sensor in the pump, uh, in the fuel injection pump. We're a little bit different in our viscosity, meaning how well it flows than petroleum diesel, and those pumps sense that. They have a little eye in there, um, and that can that's that's what they believe is causing the difference in the fuel mileage. Uh, Duramaxes, it'll go down a little bit. The guy I do biodiesel with has several Duramax diesels and he does see it decrease. Um, Cummins, a lot of people don't report a lot of differences in dropping of fuel mileage. I personally think it's because you got so much power on tap and you're not even getting into it that you don't notice it and it, it doesn't really affect it, but there is a little bit of a drop there. Um, difference in performance at the, 
at the foot, you know, at, at, at the wheels, if you will. <clears throat> like I said, there's a 10 to 12% decrease in BTU. Dodge, Chevy, and Ford owners really don't notice it. I mean, you've got so much power in that engine that unless you're really, unless you're pulling a load up a hill over parleys or something like that, you're, you're just not going to notice it. You step on it and away she goes. Um, TDI owners don't seem to notice much of a difference. The old uh, normally aspirated engines do, the ones that don't have turbos, like I can tell the difference in my in my little Isuzu pickup. It's not much, but I, I can notice the difference. Um, it's kind of like the difference between press the gas go, count to 60, and then it goes, and press the gas down and count to 70. You know, it's like 0 to 60 and when it feels like it is in my old Isuzu diesel. So, um, it will clean your fuel system out. It can plug up fuel filters. Before you begin using it, I recommend that you change your fuel filter first of all, and then after about your first three to 4,000 miles, could be even shorter depending on how much uh, crump crap is in your fuel system or fuel tank from diesel fuel. By the way, diesel fuel is really dirty. A lot of people don't think it is, but it's, it's pretty nasty stuff. Um, I tell people to always just have a fuel filter handy and learn how to use it because if you're out on the side of the road and it starts to chug on you and, and slows down, you're going to want to be able to, to swap it out. So those are some issues with performance. Um, we'll kind of talk a little bit more about other things with biodiesel as we go on. But in general, it can be placed in any diesel engine, unmodified. Uh, in the winter, we talked a little bit about the brick. Um, we do have to blend. Biodiesel still has a higher gel point than diesel fuel, and so most people will, will blend at about a B20 to B, anywhere from B20 to B80. Commercially, at the pump, biodiesel is sold in about a B20 blend. B meaning how much percentage of biodiesel there is in it. So B20 means 20% biodiesel, 80% diesel fuel. Other people have asked, okay, well, what about fuel additives to, to reduce the gel point? We've got stuff for diesel fuel. We can use power service. We can use all those types of things. Unfortunately, there aren't any really reliable um, anti-gel additives for straight biodiesel on the market yet. There was a study done up in the University of Idaho by a man named John Van Gerpen and company. He's kind of the authority on biodiesel in the United States. Uh, and his evidence showed that they really didn't have an effect. The best anti-gel additive we have on the market today is just good old diesel fuel and you just dilute the dilute the biodiesel with diesel fuel. It has been shown that you can add additive anti-gel additives to the diesel fuel which will lower the diesel fuel's gel point and then add that diesel fuel to the biodiesel and that will effectively lower the gel point of the biodiesel even lower than if you're just using straight diesel fuel. However for biodiesel itself the only anti-gel additive we know of is, is diesel fuel unfortunately. So those are some issues. We're dealing with the winter, so it's important. Um, it's a good idea to filter the fuel if you're making it yourself before you put it in your vehicle. Um, a lot of people recommend down to about a 10 micron filter. I, my view is find out what the fuel filter is on your truck or your diesel and, and filter it down to that level before you put it in the truck. My old Isuzu will probably run mashed bananas. I bet I've got, I don't know, a 100 micron fuel filter. So, I mean, it's real tolerant. But some of these um, really high injection power stroke, um, Cummins is now moving to direct injection. Anything that's direct injected, you're going to need and want to filter down to the same level, if not smaller, than what's in that fuel filter. 